opportunity in the energy industry specifically in, in Brazil. So what are the uh, opportunities in there? And some tips and suggestions to the young professional students today. So if everyone could hear me okay, uh, I would say that Marcio, the room is yours. Thanks, Nathan. It's really a pleasure to be with you this, I'd say this night, but I know that the sun is is bright now in, in the UK. Uh, that's uh, the summer summer time. Uh, in Brazil, we are two. Uh, in Brazil, but in Rio, we are four years four sorry four hours behind you. Uh, have different time zones in Brazil. Three different time zones. Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, I you know, I have almost forty years in the the oil gas and energy industry. Both in private companies, in state-owned companies, in the government, the federal government level, and the state level. Uh, in last year, March, just the beginning of the pandemic, uh, I started a new company. So, so I am a very, in spite of the gray hair, I'm a very young uh, entrepreneur. Uh, in the energy sector in Brazil. And so, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's really a pleasure to, to disclose, to talk to you and to discuss and have questions. You'll be very welcome. There are three, three key, top key points that uh, is in this SPE. I am a, an SPE a member several years. Uh, I was the I was in charge of one of the chapters in Brazil some years ago. So I have some, some relation with the, the Society of Petroleum Engineers in the Young Professionals Initiative is something very, very important. I, during my career, I have supported young people, young people keep the same age, but I'm, I'm aging in parallel. So, but I try to, to keep the, 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 the mind, the, the young, a young mind, trying to learn, to understand how the young people can transform in the, we are, we are in a, a time that transformation, changes, challenges are, are very easy to, 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 to see, to, they are everywhere, but in spite of some challenges, we have a lot of opportunities. And so I try to focus on the opportunities uh, the first point is related to the, the challenges we have in the energy industry in Brazil, uh, in the perspective of a developing country. I'd say Brazil is a country, very one of the five largest countries in terms of, uh, of land. Uh, 8.5 million square kilometers. I know the, I don't know if you would, need to make the, the translation of the, the, the kilometers for uh, acres or something, but uh, it's, it's very big. Our population is a little bit more than three, three times the UK population. We have more, a little bit more than 200 million people and with a lot of social, social challenges, social challenges. In the Lord, a lot of many things to need to be built. So one of the difference from a developed country in comparison with a developing country or an underdeveloped country, uh, we have in Brazil very rich areas and very poor areas. So there is a contrast as we have in other, in other, other countries around the, the globe. Uh, of course, we, we we have our features. Uh, we are uh, we're discovering in, in hundreds and by the Portuguese. So we have a, a influence from Portugal, but we have people from everywhere in the world living in Brazil. So Brazil is a place that we, we used to, to blend everything, starting with people. So our population uh, was kind of miscegenation, a kind of uh, melt of different cultures, different religions, different perspectives. 
So this is the same in the energy sector. We have a very diverse energy matrix, uh, very sustainable in comparison with the, the richest countries. Uh, we, our portion of renewables in the energy matrix is around 43, 44%. Um, when we compare with 14% uh, of the, the OECD countries, the, the average of the OECD countries. Uh, our electrical matrix is, is more sustainable, more than 80% of renewables. Uh, hydropower plays a very fundamental role in Brazil, but uh, hydropower is something that uh, we are facing some challenges. One, because of the dry season, the long dry season, this, uh, this is a, has been a challenge. And for environmental uh, constraints, uh, the country is not more able to build new, uh, new hydropower plants with big uh, reservoirs. So this, this is uh, a challenge. So wind power as everywhere is Brazil is one of the 10 largest countries in energy in uh, wind power. Solar power, uh, wind power is responsible for 10% of our electrical energy matrix. And solar uh, is around 1.5%, but it's starting to, to grow in a very fast pace. Uh, we have just a nuclear, we have one, one, uh, one unit or two integrated units in, in one uh, is responsible for 1.5% of the, our, our, our energy matrix. Uh, so of course, gas, we have room to, 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 to grow. Uh, to raise the participation in the energy matrix. Uh, we have, uh, uh, so, so we have a, a diverse biomass is very important in Brazil. Uh, we are a, a, a agri country, agribusiness is very, very strong as in the state of Natan in Rio Grande do Sul, in the south of Brazil and in, in the other place, the, the people uh, that were born in, in, in Rio Grande do Sul, in the state of Natal, used to go to different places in Brazil to, to, to raise soybeans and uh, corn and other, other uh, products. And uh, these products, we produce biofuels from them. So biodiesel from soybeans and ethanol from sugar cane and from uh, more recently from uh, corn. Uh, so we have, uh, we have different, uh, different source of energy and we start to blend in Brazil. At the, we have in, in our gasoline, gasoline has 27% of ethanol. And our diesel has 12% of, we are starting Starting to have more biogas in our matrix. Uh, so we, we don't have the, infra the infrastructure that we need. So there's a lot of opportunity to develop infrastructure in the, in the country. Uh, Brazil, just to make, make, uh, in a, make in a very brief way uh, for a young, for, a, for a you, can represent an opportunity to start a business in Brazil. This, this is the start of this decade, and at the end, 2030, you can be a big, a big uh, entrepreneur. Can be a, a very rich guy in Brazil. Of course, uh, there's room to to be entrepreneur in Brazil. It's, uh, uh, Brazil welcomes people from everywhere so that's 
uh, I'd say if we don't have uh, a very uh, precise or great uh, plan to the transformation of the energy sector. There's a lot of uh, room to create new solutions. So uh, you can you can look different regions, different areas in the in the country, and and uh, I say that Brazil is a place that you can be an entrepreneur. Uh, of course, there are challenges need to 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 understand uh, the, the culture. Of course, is is different from side to side, but uh, uh, I'd say that the lack of infrastructure. The market we have in Brazil, uh, the population and the position of, of our country. So we have a lot, a lot of opportunities, so many opportunities. And uh, starting the second point, uh, uh, along with all the changes in the world, the energy transition, climate changes, all the net zero programs uh, that are centered in more than more, most of them are centered in Europe. Uh, the, the big major, the, the super majors that are headquartered in the in Europe, they are pushing, leading the way. Uh, but uh, Brazil is a place where this Huge companies, super majors, independents, and others like uh, Harbor Energy and others are are have room in Brazil for onshore. Onshore is everywhere. The, the global average is around eighty percent of the oil and gas output comes from onshore. In Brazil, is the opposite. Not, not the eight, but 90% comes from offshore. And so onshore is, is much easier to, to start a business in onshore than deep waters, of course. And so there's room, there's a lot of opportunities to, if you start a, our company, EMP is a game of uh, letters, exploration and production, but becoming an engine platform to integrate different different energies. So, but along with all the changes in the world, Brazil is the energy sector reform for gas. We have a new bill approved in the, the Brazilian Congress two months ago, uh, after almost 10 years of discussion. Uh, so, a lot of opportunities. Petrobras is divesting different uh, assets, including gas. So gas is a huge opportunity in Brazil. The Brazilian new model for gas is was inspired in Europe, UK and other, other countries that made reforms maybe two, three decades ago. And uh, Brazil is uh, inspired to be like a, Europe, to have local companies, but integrated in one, one grid and with competition. With, uh, so the, the, the gas model is based in European experience. Uh, we have a reform in downstream. Uh, downstream, uh, we are Petrobras, our state owned company, where we had the owner to work for 36 years. Uh, Petrobras is divesting. Petrobras used to hold more, almost 100% of the refining capacity in the country, more than 98% of the. And Petrobras is divesting part of this capacity. So we start, we start to, uh, to have new players in, in downstream in Brazil. It makes a, it make a difference. So uh, gas and downstream will be totally different in 10 years or less. So there's a lot of opportunities. Uh, 
for for the youth for you guys uh, I think of course we can imagine an energy transition so we need to start uh, in the in the in the business and imagine that in 10 years time or 30 years time to 2050 this is a career time career uh, say 30 years, 30 or, or more, but the 30 years are there's, a, there's room for so many changes, and uh, this is an empty place to be filled with new solutions that you can provide. For upstream Petrobras, divest all the assets onshore, is divesting uh, all the assets onshore, so there will be a market for. For, for new entrepreneurs, new new experts, and uh, looking for uh, diff different uh, solution for enhanced oil recovery, for uh, to use the to integrate these assets with other ones in order to 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 have a, a more in integrated approach uh, for energy. Uh, for instance, producing gas to power plants, gas to produce blue hydrogen, uh, have room. We, we don't have in Brazil no any business related to gas and the underground underground gas storage. Uh, no CCS. No. So these these are opportunities. Because we have metro fields, we have uh, some salt uh, uh, caverns. That so so there are there there is room to integrate di different approaches. For instance, oil and gas, uh, gas storage with CO2 storage, and this is a new business with uh, carbon credit in the work for. Uh, 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 net zero approach, but without uh, being a kind of uh, a kind of say something that's uh, mandatory, something that we will achieve in different ways, something that we are not we are concerned, but we are not suffering now too much, say because we. We know that you, there will be the solutions that you haven't imagined to, to address this. This is not the end for oil and gas industry, but the, the time to rethink, to recreate this industry. Uh, oil, uh, oil byproducts can bring more than 2,000 of different solutions. So we need. Uh, to think in different way. We need asphalt. We need lubricants. Uh, we need a low sulfur content uh, bunker. At the same time that the world is discussing net zero, all the world is, let me say this is, it is I mean, right, is plowing, is, is proud of the skyrocket uh, trips uh, that use a lot of energy. So that's it's something that the, the human being uh, needs a, a balance, needs to, to think, of course, every everything should be. So for, for young people, the opportunities in Brazil, uh, my, I, my personal opinion, when I talk to the young people here in Brazil, that though, of course, you have opportunities to be an employee, to be to work in a company, a big company or a small or mid-sized company, but the the main opportunity is to have to be an entrepreneur in Brazil, create your company. I created the ENP last year, starting a new career in my after 40, almost 40 years of 
work, I started a new career that we tend to work more 20 years at least. So uh, we go to the 80, the uh, 80 years old guy <laughs> in less than 20 years. So I, I have, I, I, I am pushing the way I'm, I'm working very hard uh, because I believe that the, the company that you be the success, be successful in the future has not been created in 2050 has not been created. So it's an opportunity. In Brazil is a land and a sea of opportunities. All the majors are here investing in oil and gas, but they are investing as well in renewables. So, so uh, take, pay attention on this. And uh, about some tips and suggestions for young professionals today, it's not, I know that's not very easy uh, to talk to your friends or uh, that he, I, I am a petroleum engineer. Say, why? Petroleum engineer? Why? This is no more petroleum, no more. Uh, I read that in Calgary, the University of Calgary said no more petroleum engineer graduation from now on. Uh, so there is a big change, but in Brazil, I had the opportunity to visit the University of uh, Pelotas, where Nathan studied, uh, graduated. Uh, we have here in our company one, one girl from one engineer, a petroleum engineer, a girl from, from the same university, Diana Ness, Diana Ness, be the lock Ness, né? Diana. Diana. <laughs> uh, so, uh, we have people from in, in different universities in Brazil, uh, in technical schools, in uh, post-graduation um, programs of master of science, doctorate, a lot of people studying. And uh, when I was invited by Nathan to go to the university, the, the question five years ago was, uh, how about petroleum? You, you have future. Uh, I'd say that nowadays we need to work with the uh, with the marketing. Let me say in the in a good sense, I need to explain what is true, what is. Uh, and I just say fake news, but what is imagination? What is something that scientific fiction? What is and what's the role of the oil and gas? Of course, when you get oil, but you uh, to give you a waiver for for gas and gas and oil, most of this this situation they are together. So my first tip is take. If you uh, decide to go to the petroleum engineering, of course you can change, you can move to other, but you are one of the guys that can uh, promote, explain to the friends, explain the social media, explain, but not with a discussion that's no, no, uh, without uh, an end. Something that you should be proud that because the questions will be more and more about this. So, uh, of course, this, the commissioning, uh, energy transition, climate change, all the, these issues we need to, to understand. But when we, I look at a big company, big oil, old oil company, now an energy company, uh, Say that in 2050 you have oil and gas, you have solar, you have uh, this and that, uh, wind power, wind offshore, but I, I don't see a change in that. I have a portfolio, integrated portfolio, but we need a change. So, uh, so this is. Uh, I know that some questions are coming. Uh, so the first tip is about that. The second tip. Uh, I would say that 
of course, uh, consider study the possibility to be an entrepreneur. Even if you are a employee, or if you are in a, in a university, or you, you, everyone needs to be entrepreneur. Entrepreneur to, to make uh, everything happen, but think about being an entrepreneur, create your own company, your own business. We have uh, the digital kit, that's to say, the, the 4.0 industries, all the artificial intelligence, all the all the stuff, 3D printing, uh, drones, and, and, and everyone, everything. So be an entrepreneur is the second tip. In the last, uh, but not least, but the last to, to go to the, to the, the, the question, the QA session. Uh, I'd say the future is not the finance. The future, of course, we have a lot of scenarios, but look the, the oil price. That's just from the beginning of last year to, to now. It's, Nobody could could forecast this, even three months ago, four months, ago, six months ago. Like the uh, the weather, the economy is there is not a model to, to, to. So you need to build the future. In the future is something that is in your the vision of each one in the the integrated view of a society of a country of a. So uh, the third tip in last one uh, in this presentation is uh, build your future. Nobody is allowed to say that what is your future. So thanks, Nathan, thanks the audience. Uh, and now I'm, uh, I'm open to the QA session. No, that's that's really good. Thanks so much, Marcio. I think uh, uh, you covered all the points, but I already can see uh, uh, some questions popping up in the web chat. And please feel free, all the audience, uh, uh, to pop more. Uh, don't be don't be uh, ashamed. I was ashamed uh, like for two months to send a message to Mars in 2017. And fortunately, I did that, and I met Marcio. He went to my university. He did a speech at the time that kind of uh, put a lot of students in a very good pathway. Some people went to uh, uh, some uh, to be entrepreneurs, some people went to be to go to oil and gas company. He showed more about the onshore in Brazil that was uh, not clear at the time. So I'm sure that Mars will be more than happy uh, to respond. Um, so I can see Marcio, a question here for you that uh, we are seeing more end-to-end -end of oil and gas cycle, like breaking down barriers between upstream, downstream, midstream. Companies are becoming more integrated. Even the small ones, they are trying to, at the past, like uh, we had quite clear in Petrobras, the division between wells, subsurface, completion, like different companies inside the same company. It seems that even in, in, in big companies, everything is trying to be uh, 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 put together to be more integrated, to be more efficient. How do you see that, this transition in Brazil? Is that also happening to companies trying to be more efficient and be more integrated? Yeah, this is a good point. Uh, we have the two, two ways of some some companies, some major, super major, become integrated energy companies. They are not, your, not more IOCs, but IECs. Yeah, that's a change in the speech in some of the, uh, the attitude as well. But uh, uh, some companies in Brazil uh, are, are focused on, only on macho fields. The new companies, in Brazil, in upstream, they are considering only metro fields. Okay, Petrobras took care of these assets for several years. 
and there's room to, pro to produce more with a lower cost. And this makes sense for the, uh, the, the financial markets in spite of all the ESG, but there is a financial market that's dedicated to finance uh, much oil, much of fields, uh, oil, oil, much of much of fields. Uh, our company, EMP, we're trying to work in a different way. We're trying to, we're trying to create regional energy ecosystems. Of course, you know, is an integration that makes sense in one region. And looking what's there from the government, from the private sector, and what are the empty places, and you try to fill the, the blanks to create, to integrate, to interface this business. So it's a, so many opportunities to make this integration. But I'd say that. For instance, when you have a, a map, you look for a map, you look at a map. You have a map for, for the guy from upstream has one map. The guys from the electrical sector has a totally different map. The guy from let's say, the transportation sectors, other map. And when you put together some information, of course, it's not possible to put everything, it would be crazy. But when you put some information in one map, you start to look to feel a lot of opportunities, a lot of uh, empty space that you can fill with a, a small size of company and make some sense. So uh, I'd say that uh, most of the companies are to have companies that uh, are buying a refinery, but to have new companies in Brazil that are come from the, the energy sector they are, uh, they are coming not to upstream, almost upstream, but they're going to downstream, to midstream, integrating this in a different way. For me, is say, of course, the oil gas industry will be invaded, say, uh, in the, the headquarter, the basis, the upstream assets, it's the, the last one. So the integration uh, is, in some cases, we have a good example in Brazil, uh, in a company maybe in Eva, as a gas to wire solution in isolated area in Brazil, makes a lot of, a lot of sense. So instead, in, instead of transporting gas, they transport electrons, transport energy. Uh, That's so uh, so uh, this is for me an opportunity, not a reality. Because some of the companies, just to give you a worldwide example, Equinor, that's very strong in Brazil as well, they don't have more downstream. They have, because they are strong in, in midstream, in, in upstream, in the other, in renewables. So, so this, uh, this, these connections, you make a, a lot of, of, of change to, to cut the cost and we integrate with uh, pulp and paper industry, with uh, steel and mining, with other, all the use had the same, uh, uh, use a lot of energy, uh, need, need, they need the hydrogen, they need to, to have a much better carbon footprint. You, you see that a lot of allies are, are, are open to, to be built, to be Great. Good. And, and just something going that going that direction, you open the question for that is already in the, in the chat. You, you open the discussion for a question that is in the chat about uh, what the ENP does. And uh, uh, I know that because I've, I, I have uh, followed the company, but uh, what's this kind of stuff in ecosystems? What, what you're thinking, uh, if you could uh, expand a little bit more about what you are doing as a company and what is your purpose? Is that to be like uh, just renewables and oil and gas, or is that how you work this mix and uh, how do you regionalize that? Where where MP is today in, in in Brazil? Yes, our company started with our our 
words or, or letters, EMP, we are an exploration production company based on onshore exploration production, but aims to be an energy platform to develop an integrated solution. So for instance, we look areas in Brazil where onshore is present, where there are opportunities onshore, we choose one of the states of Brazil where I had the opportunity to lead to work. Uh, so the state of the Spirit Santo, and say, okay, there are opportunities for EMP onshore, okay. But we are working with exploration. What we are working with much fields. Uh, we are working uh, with a project of a niche refinery. That's a refinery, not to produce diesel and gasoline, but to produce uh, lubricants, special lubricants to produce asphalt. As I said before, Brazil is a, as a developed country, there's a lot of infrastructure to be built, including roads. The roads need, they need uh, asphalt. So asphalt is very expensive in Brazil. Brazil has to import asphalt. In spite of all production we have, we are, we are export more than 1 million barrels of crude oil a day, but we are importing some oil products. And asphalt is something that is easy to transport in a very long course. So we are working with asphalt in a maritime fuel bunker with very low sulfur content because the oil there is very low sulfur content. So it's not expensive, it's more cost effort to to produce this. Uh, we are working to integrate the, the gas grid because uh, as we have in the North Sea, a gas grid where you have gas coming from different going from different platforms to different countries. Uh, is Brazil has a very poor grid and it is not integrated. So there are some places there are um, uh, spare capacity for processing gas for transporting gas. In the other, there are uh, uh, traffic jam of gas traffic jam. So uh, just with small solution, with small integration. So looking the whole picture of request where we're looking all over Brazil, but you started with Spirit Sun to try to, to show. And for instance, we go to, to uh, we drill a well we, for drilling. We, we studied the geology. And we know that there are other minerals there, other mineral richness there that can be addressed by our exploration. And why not consider that? And not consider as another business, but an integrated business. What does what is that mineral has to do with gas, for instance? So let's work to have a, a gas chemical uh, process. So we start to create, uh, uh, we were very young, but there was a game in the past called Sin City. It's a simulation of the series that you work. So we are creating an ecosystem. We are simulating with a map, uh, started to put all the layers and uh, say well, what this is possible. For instance, there close to the gas infrastructure transportation, there is a ethanol plants based on sugar cane. And this plant can produce biogas, biomethane, and, but they, not, they do not produce because they are is something that's not the core business. So we are working to integrate this in the grid. Grid on shore, grid on shore. So I, I say we do not discover, we, we, we have three discoveries, three or two oil discoveries and one gas discovery on shore in the last year, one very recent, we are under, under evaluation. But the, the, the main discoveries are infrastructure, gas pipelines that are almost abandoned. We have a, a gas treatment plant of 2 billion cubic meters a day of capacity that was abandoned, almost abandoned. It's something that uh, if you need to invest today, you'll be around 40 million pounds. Uh, and this, we came to us almost for free, came with the mature fields. 
that, 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 that's really interesting. How can you see some some kind of a, a really a, a, a gold inside the the land that were not looked at, and uh, and you're seeing like a, a lot of infrastructure uh, opportunities that are not are not being used correctly and not providing the right value for those. So uh, that's really that's really interesting, Mars. And you told about uh, a refinery, asphalt. Uh, you talk about gas grid. You talk about oil and gas and health. Everything kind of regionalized because uh, an important point when you look at cost cost perspective, the transportation of things are really costly. So uh, uh, if you can do things in a regional base, even that is small, you reduce the cost of transporting, and that makes your business more uh, 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 feasible. So that's that's really really interesting. In the same region, the same ecosystem, just to finalize, we are working with the underground gas storage. And not only gas storage, but CO2 storage. And has, as we have different oil uh, depleted the oil fields and gas fields, we can work uh, as a business, not only for oil and gas, but for the popping paper, for the, for the steel and mining industries that are in the area, the same as surrounding, uh, we can work for them. Uh, so when we put together, everything becomes, uh, uh, come, we have, we can have a revenue. Yeah. So that's EMP idea. We are working with Spirit Sun and we are starting to, to study and to work with, we should you know something that some days, weeks or, or less about in the state of Sergipe. Sergipe is more for offshore is of green fields. But like uh, Guyana, ExxonMobil is there. And when ExxonMobil is there, it's somewhere they look for big, big fish. Uh, and Petrobras has made some discoveries. So we can foresee the future and start to plan where to, to be to receive the, the, a good ball to make the goal. Good, really great. And, and, and talking more about uh, 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 Marcio, uh, really opening the questions, in a personal side, how was to to change from from someone that worked most of the, of, of the life for a state-owned company, then you worked for, for the state properly as a representative uh, 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 of for govern, uh, like making the the, the, the public policies, etc., that you improved help Brazil uh, uh, to receive investment. And then after you had uh, a white hair, like you 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 said before, you decided to go for the for the private sector and create a. a I would say it's a new business. It's already big. But it started as a startup uh, uh, and was impacted by the pandemic. How was that transition? And uh, it, from, a, from a professional side, of course, but as well from a, a personal side. Uh, was something that was envisioned for some years, but uh, no courage to, to make it happen. <laughs> so uh, I had the opportunity in the, this last year five years to be three years, a little bit more in the federal government, taking care of all the reforms in the oil, gas and biofuel sector in Brazil, all these reforms. Uh, so I, I decide that, okay, I, because of my age, because of the, the, time, the, the time frame, the window of opportunities was, was there and I decided, okay, I need to resign something that was not easy to do. I need to uh, say to retire from Petrobras at the same time, or I retired, retired from Petrobras and I resigned my position in the, the government. I worked with three different ministers in two different governments. Uh, but uh, there was a cycle, and uh, and they said, people imagine, okay, you are 
going to work to be a, a institutional relation, something like this. No, I don't like that. Uh, I don't know how to do this. I work in the government. I don't know how to do this, and I don't want to do this. Uh, I, I, I'd like to create a company uh, that could be this, or a lot of start, a lot of, uh, I decide to make some trips. I, after retiring from the, uh, resigning from the government, I had to a quarantine, a quarantine of six months because of the position in the government. So they were not allowed to work in, uh, in the oil and gas initiative. And I decided to travel to some place in the world and try to, so I went to Canada, to Norway, to other countries in, in France. I was not in, in the UK at that time. But uh, uh, so I, I talk to different people and try to say, what is something that should be new? I don't want to match your fields or work as a, an executive in a company. I, I decided to bring some, some, uh, some shareholders, some people that's investors uh, in the, a team. We have a team that's very diverse. Uh, people like me, the six, but very young people at the same time. So we have, we have a balance. Uh, we don't have a, in people in the, mid, in the middle. So we have uh, old ones and the young ones. Uh, we have a balance of women, men. Uh, we have people from different places of Brazil. It was interesting. Uh, people from this, the very south of Brazil, in the very north, where we have a, we are welcoming an engineer, uh, a lady that is, uh, is uh, from the state of Pará, the island of Marajó, in the mouth of Amazon River. She was born there and the, started the course in the university nearby. But petrol engineer, it's amazing, petrol engineer there. Uh, and she, she's coming. We have a young geologist from the, uh, let's say, uh, not the traditional universities. So that's, so these people has a lot of energy because they are out of the main opportunity. So, uh, so we are working to make something different. So our connection with the young, with the, uh, the initiative that 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 runs in Brazil, what there, which you have to translate what it means in in English till the end because it's not a free translation. Should be this is let's take profit of all, all the bears of everything of energy, not the last wind, the last uh, wave, the last sun, the last uh, the last oil and gas. So it's not a, there is not a name for that. To change, 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 and uh, still there be room for, for that. Yeah. So That's... for me is a person, of course, for my family, my wife and my children, two children. I have a a, a daughter that lives in London, uh, but she's not. She's economist, not from, not on the related to oil, gas, energy. Uh, but. Uh, uh, I had to negotiate with my my family, uh, so it's a lot of negotiation. So, so our companies, our, we say that we we connect. Our slogan is we connect, we articulate, and we innovate. So make a connection. Connection is what with people. One, one guy, two guy, two is or one company, and we articulate from different sectors, from different. The, you see, the the main, the, the most amazing opportunity is to integrate. So I would say it's not energy transition, but it's energy integration. Don't know what to be the balance, but it's an energy integration. No, it's all, okay. You have to abandon this and go to that. It's not. It's not good. We are in the world uh, discussing the rights of these people from different points of view. 
but oil and gas, they are being beaten with some very strong words that uh, uh, need to, it's, it's not a live being, so we need to defend, to explain. Because it's not, uh, oil is ugly. And some, peop some people used to say, oh, it's ugly because it's black. So it's something that's not acceptable. That's that. Some yeah. So that's uh, it's a lot of a good good thing to do with the, the new oil. That's okay. diesel. The transportation have a, a revolution in the transportation, the in the mobility uh, sector. That's, everything is different now. The digital now is, but uh, oil is very important and will be very important for several we need to to conserve the oil yeah Not to that, that's, that's, that, that's important to make sure that uh, and we are going to this pathway and uh, like you were saying uh, even as a as a, a small medium company in brazil you are already thinking about co2 storage already thinking about co2 uh, 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 emission reduction, and that is what the industry is doing, and that's the correct. But uh, it's clear that uh, 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 the pathway for oil and gas uh, uh, in the future will be needed. So, uh, and you need to do that in a properly sustainable and the best uh, a way as possible to guarantee that energy will continue being provided. Because it, in the world today, uh, we still have 2.5 billion people living in in poor. Uh, um, uh, in poor energy, so uh, uh, in energy poverty, sorry. So it's really important to guarantee that these people are escalated because energy is is uh, 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 what you secure the so social uh, uh, um, escalation of of uh, these uh, these people. So it's really important. I can see that Lev, oh, you have a uh, hands up. So I think you want to do the questions aloud. Please go ahead. Yes, thank you, Nathan, and thank you, Mr. Felix, for joining us. Um, I have a personal question of my own. And um, of course, you mentioned um, that a successful company is yet to be created for the future. Um, of course, yeah, you encourage us to be entrepreneurs. There's new solutions that we need to work on as the next generation. And it's inspiring to look at you, you know, deciding to make a big move at this stage of your career. Um, well, I'm sure you were able to leverage the connections you had during the career to be able to build a strong team to work on your company. Um, speaking from my point as a young uh, professional, I'm wondering like what steps can someone in my position could take? I'm thinking maybe in a few years time, four or five years, aspiring to do that himself. W what are the advice you could bring to someone in my position? Yeah, thanks, Leif, for, for your question, your comments. Uh, as I said before, it's not possible to predict the future, but you need to build the future. And, but uh, I think what's the, uh, a guy from the oil sector, from a petroleum engineer graduate, uh, should do? Uh, there is no universe, no graduation, or anything about in, in, energy. There are pieces of energy. There is no, I try to find, please uh, say to me if it, there is any place with a, a totally, fully integrated energy approach in the universe, a course of energy. So uh, the energy, there are guys from the wind power, the solar, the nuclear, the hydropower, the oil and gas, uh, and they don't talk much with each other. So uh, I, I would say that the, by, uh, because of the need of uh, to survive uh, as a professional, uh, I, I, I guess the people from the petroleum engineering, uh, petroleum, especially petroleum engineer, geologists has a, other other ways out, but sometimes what they say, uh, you need to start 
energy as something integrated. Well, the solutions, I, I believe, a strong belief, that the solutions from the energy, in the global energy basis, will come from the guys, from the, the young professionals from the petroleum sites. Because we, you we are in the transition since the university. So, uh, for sure, you find the solutions to integrate the different kinds of energy. And so, instead of having a picture in 2050 that I saw the LinkedIn some days ago, that in 2050, you have, what's the picture of the, the successful companies? Of course, you have 30% of oil and gas. You know, it's, it's, it's a fragment. We need to integrate. So I guess the most challenging in the, uh, is uh, in the, the same time, in the, the most promising possibility is to start how to integrate and, the energy sector. Based on I'm trying to co co collaborate on that. On and, and, and Marcio, just make this as a as a as a, a, a friend's talk. Um, if if let's say I, I know probably Leif has a very good idea already, have something in place to to, to create a new business model to some specific region. Uh, I think the main question for Leif would be how to find the investor, where to go. Uh, it should be go on LinkedIn and, and start to shout about about that or go to the Victoria station here in London and start to, to bring the paper to people like uh, the business plan. What would be that recommendation? Because we have seen so far a lot of students and in the tech area that have created a business plan and put forward. But of course, sometimes to create something that's just is just software is quite easier. But for example, in something that for the energy industry that I know that Leif has some plan for that, how could he find uh, the investor for, 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 for this? I have learned that is more money available in the world that the price of the world price. You can buy everything in the world and you have a change. So the, the, the challenge is not the, because there is no money, but how to connect good projects have uh, good, uh, good money, have good investors, because it's not the, you have to be at the same time have a good project, but with good investors. If it's a, not a good investors, you can be in trouble. So not any money yeah, you need to, to find. Uh, is uh, uh, it's a kind of Sherlock Holmes challenge to how to find this this money, uh, but I, I have a, a belief that uh, you should not ask for it. Uh, when you have a LinkedIn open to work, I I I, I feel that it's not a good way to communicate. Because sometimes we are working in the, the titles, you are working some some place at the same time we are open to work. So it's something. Well, we need to disclose your project. We need to call to the universe that's what you want. If the universe can be a prayer, can through a prayer, can be to can 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 happen through in a conversation like this can happen. You need to talk. You need to, to say you uh, share your dream. Share your dream, LinkedIn or, or, or in the Victoria station surrounds. Uh, no matter, you don't know uh, where you find this, but you need to, to look for it. And uh, I, I a guy, a very important guy in Brazil uh, that worked in Petrobras for several years. When he left Petrobras, he made a speech. Uh, his name is Rodolfo Landim. Rodolfo Landim is now the president, the CEO of one of the most popular foot, uh, football team in Brazil. <laughs> no discussion, no, <laughs> no football discussions. 
but uh, he he used to run an oil and gas company, his own gas company, oil and gas company. He 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 sold, he sold, he sold this company less than one year ago. Uh, he said, always there is someone observing us, but we don't know who who is observing us. So our dream is someone is paying attention because on the other side, there, there are investors looking for good projects. So we need to give chance to the luck. So, uh, but you don't, it's not possible to say, okay, I go to Victoria Station and say, I need money to invest in my project. We need to be creative. There's a lot of competition. In, the, in Brazil, there's a lot of kind of these people uh, looking the streets for, there are some good examples how to, to find money for a project, but uh, it's not the best way I, I, I should say, but share your dream, no matter every day, every time, but don't, don't be a tough guy, don't be, uh, say the world is, is, uh, is not uh, good for me, uh, you, you find, I hope to, to have news from you in the less than five years for sure that you are in the right way to get there. So, so the main thing is share, share, share the dream, uh, create the project, create the business plan and start to share because someone is looking for, for uh, yeah. and you don't know who is. That's, I, I, I think I, it's- I used to, to joke, say, okay, imagine here in IMP, imagine that uh, Bill Gates or Warren Buffett or a rich guy in the world comes here and say, okay, you have 15 minutes to present to your project, your dream, and I will finance it. And they no, I need two hours to present my dream. So be ready to present in one is single slide. Make a, 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 a draft, make a drawing, write some words, think about it. Any project should fit in a piece of paper. And they I, think, <laughs> I think I think I think that the people that are attending this call or you see after in the YouTube, Marcel, they will add you in LinkedIn and probably they will start to, to publish some some one slide on LinkedIn just with uh, an opportunity of business integration between UK and and Brazil, and, I, and I'm, I'm sure that and I'm sure that people will be looking at that. <laughs> that is that is that is not a receipt for that. <laughs> Create your own receipt. That's true. That's true. Great. So uh, we are run uh, to the end, but I will open for more two questions. I can see that Eric uh, Zanini uh, has his hands up. So Eric, over to you if you want to do the, the question you did in the chat. All right, uh, hello, Marcio. Uh, thanks for the conversation, for the talk. And we met recently uh, on the NRGC program. And I wanted to ask you, uh, what were the main events of uh, your career to reach out like as a CEO? And uh, I'd like to ask you to what 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 do you think is the gas potential in the south of Paraná Basin? Just to just to, to add a comment, uh, Paraná Basin is one of the basins in in South Brazil and quite unexplored. And uh, and Eric is from uh, Federal University of Pelotas, so welcome, Eric. <laughs> Hi, Eric, good to hear from you. Uh, of course, uh, imagine a very large basin, totally unexplored, and waiting for new ideas. So, in, there, in Brazil, there is a program that's offering so many areas, more than 2,000 areas in Brazil. And if you want more, go to the, the, the regulatory agents and ask that they can bring more and more areas. There are some uh, areas in the Paraná Basin. Uh, we, our company, we are looking 
uh, of course, mature bases, that's the mature, the much few mature bases, but we're looking some uh, new frontiers. But new frontiers in Brazil are in the, they are in the, in, in the maybe new frontier for oil gas, but are very, very developed areas for agribusiness. So for me, agribusiness is a partner for that. So for Paraná Basin and for Paris Basin, that's now in the, the permanent permanent uh, uh, offer of the, the open acreage program of the, the federal regulatory agency for oil gas. Uh, so uh, there is a lot of opportunities. Uh, in, imagine that if we discover oil and gas in Paraná Basin in 2021, there no, no, uh, all the contrast that we have in Brazil, the 700 million people in the world that they don't have access to energy today, uh, what would be, we don't make a difference. So you need to, to discover, to understand very soon. The time is now. And uh, you need to, to, to understand, to, to study the, the basin. In, in Brazil, we don't talk about unconventions, something, but we talk about only conventional. But if you imagine unconventional, it's, uh, it's amazing. Uh, in the offshore, the state of Rio Grande do Sul, there are gas hydrates. But gas hydrates, something that is not being explored in, in a commercial way. So there's a lot of, when you look, uh, Brazil is the third country in the world in mining, but it just, it just working less than 5% of the territory. Yeah. And look, Canada is a sustainable, very sustainable country. They are the, the, the first one, but uh, uh, the, the, the other part of the Eric's question is regarding what the events uh, that took me, brought me to this, this position. Uh, I'd say that uh, I never asked for that. I, I, I tried sometimes to explore maybe telepathy or something like this, uh, but uh, to share some dreams I said that I'd like to create a company, not to be a CEO of the company, to be a shareholder or to be, uh, but uh, was a, a construction, of course, a 40 year construction. But uh, of course, I say, no, it's too much time, it's a long, uh, but of course, you need to age something. It was not possible to, to cross all the, all the, years of experience, but you don't need 40 years. Nowadays you need maybe 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. Between 10 and 20 years of experience, uh, you can be, of course, you can be very young, start very young, but uh, of course we have some challenges. Uh, no, it's no limit for, for age, but uh, as Nathan was mentioning before about the, his experience offshore, uh, so oil field experience is important. Uh, people, uh, I had the opportunity to travel in Brazil, so my, uh, maybe more than a hundred times in a, a bus, 12 hour trip bus every weekend, go commuting, uh, no, no air connection. It was not easy to, to have air connection, it was expensive or, or it was, uh, it took a lot more time to the, the go by airplane than to go by bus. And I had the opportunity to learn a lot of things about people. I start to put pay attention to the, the talks and the meets, meet, I made some friends, uh, not only in the bus, the passengers, but the, the, the driver, the people from the, the, the bus stops for the restaurants, for the so uh, a lot of people, uh, people that works uh, along the road, sees the future, the progress 
going up and down and say, oh, it's going that way. So uh, we need to, to understand people. It's not, when we go to a project, we, I study the history of that, that place, who lived there before, what happened there, what, what's the history behind, because there is a kind of soul that you need to understand that's a life, that's not a kind of religion, but it's, it's something that I feel more comfortable if I know and I try to understand the, the history behind some, uh, the place where you are building an ecosystem, for instance. Yeah, really good. Uh, and, and, and I think just to for a close out, I think embracing certain two or two questions that were put to get uh, separately in the in the chat. Uh, Marsh, you are talking about to learn about people is a really important to be CEO at the same time that to be technical. Uh, there are some questions talking about what, should, for example, I'm graduating right now and uh, I'm not getting a job. Should I try a specialization, go for a master or something? Or should I try to embrace more uh, 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 people skills, like or soft skills, as you know? And transverse this question to you: What do you look as a today as a as a CEO of a, a energy company? What do you look to a graduate or a student when you hire them? What are the main characteristics that you look at a young professional that to, uh, uh, is applying to work to, at an EAP? Yeah, it's, uh, this is a challenge uh, along the, the time, and this is a current challenge in Brazil, for instance. So many students asking for an internship program, uh, opportunity to, to work. And, and I say, uh, because you create an inter internship program for uh, online, see, digital internship program. Uh, so we had uh, people from different parts of Brazil. Of course, one the barrier to have uh, someone from other countries is uh, because of the, the, the language. Uh, this is a, a, a really, really barrier, uh, uh, in my point of view, uh, for to, to work in Brazil, most people more used to talking in Portuguese, in Brazilian Portuguese. Don't, be, don't go to learn Portuguese in Portugal and come to Brazil. That will be, <laughs> will be will face some challenges to, to be understood. But uh, I'd say that we are looking for diversity. I don't want to know about the, the grades. No matter from here, because if you had a problem, if you had a bad grade or if are the first, the, the best in class, or it doesn't matter. Need the, the, the brightness in the eyes. Uh, the interest to, to, to create, to raise you. We don't, uh, I don't, uh, we don't have, uh, we don't uh, want people for the lifetime. We work, we want people to create their own business. As I say that our company wants to promote along these 10 years, these decades, a, a thousand companies. Companies with two, three people. It not to be, be shareholders, it will be just like a, a vehicle to launch, yeah, like the, the, the trips you'll have the last days. You need to, to launch and go, okay? Be in the network. Network will be very, very strong in, in not a, a formal network, but an informal network. So uh, when uh, we would we, we like diversity, of course, if you could have people from different parts of the world, but I would say you need to understand to learn Portuguese uh, in a <laughs> in a fast way. Uh, or in create our uh, interface, uh, automatic interface. That's not uh, easy because we have the future. But, uh, but our idea, of course, we are very small, just a few intern uh, interns. But we are trying to show to the, to the big companies, or to other companies, 
that there's no reason, no excuse to don't have an, a, a big company had a trainee program in the, in the pandemic, it had to postpone. And I said, transform the first steps in digital. Start the program. You don't need to be present to start. We have some people working with us that they haven't met personally. Was not it was something that is it's not possible to to consider one year and a half ago. Yeah, but now it's, it happens. So uh, we need uh, people. Say, I, I had a, a boss that said to me, "Say, when you choose someone to a mission, to a position, or to something, uh, the, to that guy, to that girl, yeah, need to be the the." the most important challenge in, in, for, for this person. If you're not, oh no, I'd like to work in, in Harvard or EMP just to make a shortcut, uh, it's not good for, for this person, for us, for everyone. So we need the brightness of the, the eyes. That's the, the, main, uh, the main point for us. Yeah. yeah, I think that I think that a, a, a really comprehensive response because in the forums with HRs and other executives of uh, 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 energy companies in Brazil and as well other in Latin America as a whole, uh, we have seen the same. Currently, they are looking not for grades, not for uh, uh, these kind of static things. I think the world is quite dynamic, so. Uh, the, these young people, uh, even without experience, they need to prove that they really want to do that. They are willing to uh, uh, have some, uh, of course, to have some uh, 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 to work a little bit more, some time, but to de to deliver because today is not expected like a, was before, like a career that you be always uh, taught at the beginning. No, now you need to enter and deliver, and that's what we are learning from tech companies where you. You 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 are you can be a manager early in your early days of your career, but that it needs that needs a delivery, a constant delivery, because uh, uh, we are not a static uh, individuals. So with that, I think uh, we could cover most of questions. Uh, for the ones that if you feel that was not covered, uh, 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 guys and girls, uh, sorry, but uh, I'm sure that you have. Plenty of opportunity to, to discuss that uh, uh, outside. So I will take those if you pop in there and we can try to send to Mars and Mars will respond to us and, and share again. But uh, yeah, I would like to thank everyone. I know that this is, is, is summer holidays uh, here in UK. In really summer, it seems like Rio de Janeiro, 30 degrees. And uh, 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 people are coming to the office not because they like, but just because their conditioning uh, uh, is not everywhere else. So um, I'm really glad, Marcio, to receive you. So in the name of the Young Professional of London section, uh, it was a pleasure uh, because I know that your agenda is pretty much busy. Uh, investors um, to manage a team and you are here with us. I think you, you gave a really good example what Brazil has an opportunity. For people that want to know more, uh, I think I, I didn't tell you, but I'm Brazilian as well, so I'd be happier to respond in, in LinkedIn, any questions that you have or, or share materials that I explain more about what Marcio talked us through. And, uh, and that's it. Really, thank you, Marcio. Really appreciate it. And I will pass the, uh, uh, the, the room to, to Sean or, or Chair.